Uh, I think the headlines are greatly exaggerated. And you wouldn't hear me say this when I got into the digital space back in 1995. I was a big advocate of uh, internet spending going up, uh, traditional TV dollars going down, and you know, it's 20 years later. So it's been quite a long time that we've been saying these types of things. And you know, the advent of TiVo, I think it was probably maybe 1999, 2000 when it started to get some traction. People started talking about it a lot more. All of the parameters to say that television is going to really go away significantly have been there for a very long period of time, and it hasn't. You know, TV dollars have remained pretty flat. Uh, you know, digital has, con has, has jumped up. Digital started to get some momentum, obviously, with the dot-com, and, and then it started to flat, flatten out with all the VC dollars going out of the market. And then in 2003, bang, it, there became another market, and that's when the real boom started. Um, so there became a belief that digital is the promise that was made, you know, early on. But I think the television networks are very smart, and the advertisers have had a great relationship with the television networks since roughly 1950. So I believe that the TV networks are actually going to be a lot smarter in terms of how they market themselves, and I think they'll they'll uh, they'll do just fine. Storytelling has changed significantly. I mean, it's we've always, as you mentioned, been storytellers. But what I like was what Eric from J. Walter Thompson was talking about, story starters. Uh, we live in an environment now where we can begin an amazing story and let the consumer finish it. Uh, and that's incredibly powerful. You know, by, by evangelizing your customers to talk about you in a way that supports their lives, makes their lives better, entertains them, and obviously they share the story with other people. I honestly think that's a good part of our future. Uh, because this one-way message, highly curated message that's been created in a conference room with marketing executives and then spent $300,000 producing it and throwing it out in 30-second commercials, I think we all know that's dead uh, or is, is dying a death. But the notion of thinking about less about how I can market my brand and more about how I can improve my customers' lives is I think something that's going to begin to gain a significant amount of traction. And you, we've seen that with what Deluxe did in terms of helping the small businesses uh, create stories, a hundred different stories across their small businesses. Uh, my company did it for California Pizza Kitchen. It was We created something called What We Do For Love on Valentine's Day so they were, their cu customers could actually say what they do for love and say hashtag CPK Love Sweeps. So it becomes this this, this story starting message from the brand and then you create this whole ecosystem of communication through various technology tools that again ultimately helps the brand. I think when you look at video there, there's clearly there's, there's uh, many different things but uh, let's focus on two right now. I mean the first is the content itself, right? And we are not a big fan of, of, of content that is not viral, content that is not shared. Uh, we are, I think I see that as direct response. I see that much further down the funnel after somebody's already bought into, yes, I like the brand, I've, I've, I've seen you a number of times, I, I, I love what you're doing, and then you kind of hit them with a the hard message because you're going to get a much higher level of conversion there. I think so many advertisers are still stuck in that, you know, I need to talk about me and let's go ahead and sell the consumer on all my services. And I think we all agree in this conference that that is, that is out. So I think the first thing is, you know, thinking about, I'll get back to it again, how I can make my customers' lives better, how I can entertain, how I can influence, how I can make them laugh, you know, touching stories. Maybe I partner with a, a charity and there's, there's a goodwill message there. So what is that emotional connection that you're going to make? Because people make decisions emotionally, then they justify them rationally, right? And as Eric again said, you know, aim at the heart first and then the eyeballs will follow. So that is very important, obviously, the message. And then there are so many distribution areas out there. Um, you know, there's YouTube, there's Facebook, there's Snapchat, there's Vine, uh, there's Instagram. So what we think about is, you know, if you have the budget, how are you going to communicate in each one, right? We're, we like YouTube. Um, we don't see YouTube as, as a social network. We see it as a video distribution channel. So it's a great place to house your videos or Vimeo if you want them a little bit higher quality. 
but we're a bigger fan of Facebook. You know, Facebook views are, I think, um, on par getting close to YouTube, so they're somewhere in the neighborhood. But then you have that viral aspect, right? And you immediately share it with all your friends. So we're much bigger fans of, of Facebook when it comes to video versus YouTube for that reason. Then it depends upon you know, your audience. You know, if, if you're reaching a young audience, and only if you're reaching a young audience, let's just say teens and early 20s, then, uh, then Vine is a great spot. You know, influencers are great, obviously, with videos. Um, so connecting with influencers in Snap and, and Vine and, and getting it in the right hands of, of people that could influence your customers to make a Vine decision.